very good afternoon to you and welcome to today's edition of Joy Business Masterclass. Masterclass is powered by Joy Business and is brought to us by Goyle. Goyle Good Energy, Goyle Yenara Yedia. Masterclass comes your way every Wednesday at 1.30 p.m. and runs all the way through to 2.15 p.m. here on your superstation Joy 99.7. My name is Yabana and I'm glad to be your host for today's edition of Masterclass. Ahead of the Eid holiday tomorrow, we want to take the opportunity and wish our Muslim brethren a happy holiday. And uh, I actually had to learn how to say this so I can say it on air because uh, Dr. Ibn is here with me. We want to say Barka de Salah. Barka Kidi. Barka de Salah with an yes. accent, right? Yes, <laughs> okay, happy holidays to yes. all of our Muslim brethren ahead of tomorrow's holiday. So coming back into the conversation, last week we started a conversation here on marketing and we talked about marketing for the individual. It was sort of an introductory conversation, if you like. We looked at what exactly marketing is, what it involves, um, how it happens and all of that. And there were three things, if you like. We always like to do a quick recap for those of our listeners who missed out on the conversations last week. If you did miss out, the entire show is available on our Facebook page on video. Please go there and go and look at it. And if you're also available to watch us, we're streaming live on Facebook right now. By all means, go to our Facebook page and watch the show so you can be a part of it. Three things that uh, stayed with us in our conversation last week when we started talking about marketing was that, number one, we said that marketing is a process and the key components of this process are people and products. People and products. Of course, I'm sure that when we drill down further, um, all those who have done marketing into detail will tell you that there are a few other key components. But for the layperson who's listening this afternoon, there are two key components, people and products. The second thing we studied was that so long as there are people and there are products, and there is also the need factor in between, marketing will continue. Marketing will continue. So, so long as some people have products, some also have a need. The two have to be put together. And in putting the two together, marketing takes place in order to make it available, to let people know that this product, this business, this service is available in this place. And therefore, they go there and the exchange takes place. And the third thing uh, that we also learned in the conversation last week was that one of the key objectives of marketing is to successfully match product with people's needs so that an exchange or sale or supply takes place. So this is the third thing that we talked about. One of the key objectives was to successfully match the products or the service available with people's needs so that an exchange, a sale or a supply takes place. Today, we continue in that same conversation, but we're going to be looking at crafting a brand identity, crafting a brand identity. Back in the studio with us, Dr. Ibn Kailan Abdul Hamid. He's the head of marketing department at the University of Professional Studies. Doc, you're welcome back to the conversation. Thank you so much and Eid Mubarak to my colleagues Indeed. around the world. Indeed. Is it the same as Barka de Salah? It's the same. So okay. Barka de Salah is Hausa. Okay. Eid Mubarak is an Arabic okay. uh, version of it. Okay. So to all my Arabic friends, Eid Mubarak. Eid Mubarak. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about brands today and yes, the brand please. conversation stretches from here till tomorrow morning. There is a general misconception when people talk about brands, they look at logo and they think that the entire brand is in the logo. But there is a certain interdependence. There's a like Venn diagrams back in school. There is a subset and then there's a superset Absolutely. within which the subset exists. But one of the things that I, I, I sort of read up before coming on the show today, just to sort of kickstart that conversation was from Kevin Plank, who's also a business mogul. He says that brands are all about trust. That trust is built in drops and it is lost in buckets. Brands are all about trust. That trust is built in drops, but when you are losing it, you lose it in buckets. Um, Jonah Sachs, who's also a business mogul, said that your brand is a story that is unfolding across all your customer touch points. I'll end with this one. Jeff Bezos also said this. He says, your brand is what other people say about you when you are not in the room. Your brand is what other people say about you when you are not in the room. Reminds me of what Jesus said to Peter. He said, who do men say I am? <laughs> so you're a business owner, you're an entrepreneur. What do people say about you and your brand? What is the story that you're telling? Doc, talk to us about crafting your brand identity as part of the marketing conversation. Thank you so much, host, and uh, thank you to Joy Business for the opportunity. So, um, as a continuum from where we ended last week, 
um, we need to look at the relationship between branding and marketing. Mm. So I begin the conversation to argue that um, branding is a facet of marketing. That is, is an aspect of marketing and um, is the marketers that engage in branding. And so we look at what the process is. I actually agree with the scholars that you have cited in terms of what they consider branding to be. Um, they are actually very uh, on point. Mm. So now as an academic, I would consider branding as a process. So they did not indicate that. But I think the third one talked about it coming in drops mm -hmm. and leaving in buckets. Bucket, so, that, that, so that is a, that is a process. Yeah. So what will you do to ensure that it comes in those drops? Mm -hmm. So as a, an academic, we encourage businesses, individuals, or managers of SMEs that branding is a process that we use to create a distinctive identity now a distinctive identity for a product so again from last week's conversation the question then is what is a product and a product is an offering and i was happy you indicated that uh, people or product now when we say a product a product is an offering that someone has to provide to a market so this offering could be a person could be a good could be a service, could be an idea or an event, as we discussed last week. So we are saying that branding is a process where you create a distinctive identity for any of these, as I have mentioned. Also, we can look at branding to be about differentiating and creating a unique position in the market space. So uh, similar to identity, you can find things that will make you stand out in the crowd. Okay, and um, just like the second scholar talked about trust. So when you engage in branding, the outcome is that we expect it to build trust, we expect it to build credibility, and also we expect that you should have loyal customers over a period of time. Now, what am I trying to argue out for Brandon today? Uh, as a business, uh, let's say you're a carpenter, okay, and or uh, any of the artisans, either carpenter or um, seamstress, or um, you sell any of the meals we eat, what would you do so that we identify you? What would you do so that in the market of service providers in these areas you would be uniquely positioned what would you do to stand out now we encourage you to adopt branding activities or branding processes so in the course of the conversation we then will ask ourselves what is a brand because so many times people think brands are products. And I was happy this first author you cited indicated that it is not a brand. It is not a name or logo. Okay. So a brand is more than just a logo. Uh, in Marketing 101, uh, when you engage students, they, are, they think that a brand is a name, is a logo, is what? These are brand elements. Now, when we talk of brand elements, they are used to facilitate the brand building process. So, for example, if you don't have a name, then how do we identify you? How do you differentiate? So, I am Kelan, mm -hmm. you are Yao. Mm -hmm. So, that name helps to differentiate the two of us. Sure. So, if you want to call someone in this room, you say, I'm talking to Yao, then we know who the person is exactly. referring to. So, that is a form of identity. Right. Again, my surname is Abdul Hamid. Mm -hmm. Okay, that differentiator could be I'm a Muslim. Okay, so names are too important when it comes to branding. We are not downplaying it. But we are saying that you need to do more than just give it yourself a name. To so it's an identity. Identity. It is beyond <laughs> just the name. Um, like you mentioned the identity. Yesterday we invited the uh, the Commission on Data Protection in Ghana to engage with our level 400 students. And they were talking about that issue of identity. Identity if, theft. Identity theft and all of that. So, so when you mention that, I just remember. So clearly you see that identity now goes beyond the name. So your biometrics and other things that uniquely 
separates you from others is your identity. So when we talk of brand identity, we are referring to more than just the name or logo. Let me just share this to corroborate what you're saying yes, in please. that conversation on, on the data protection. I've been in Farah before where same has been shared and they talk about one strong word, corroboration. Absolutely. So when I show up and I say, my name is Dr. Ibn Kaylan Abdul Hamid, the next question is, how do we know you are who you say you are? Absolutely. Now your word is not enough. So you say, I have a passport. I have an identity card. Yeah. That identity card is not in itself proof of your identification. But the fact that it is provided by a sovereign government who corroborates that indeed the gentleman before you is Dr. Ibn Kaylan Abdul Hamid. That corroboration is what we call the market opinion. That's what you're talking about. Absolutely. Absolutely. I just want to, to corroborate the point. Yeah, exactly. Made. Exactly. Yeah. And that's a very good one. So... To end with the conversation on brand, a brand represents a collective experience and associations that people have with a particular entity. So um, Joy has been around for years. Um, Joy, later we'll talk about the brand issues right. that Joy has done. Uh, now we have Joy Business. Okay, so uh, you will then realize that people have some experience with Joy over these years. So Joy has built a brand for themselves and you mentioned that it trickles down small small so it's been built over the years later we'll look at the brand joy and look at some of the so the name brand the name is clear uh I just want to run through some elements, brand elements that businesses may want to use in their development of a brand. Um, logo and name is very common. Taglines are very important. So Joy talks about discerning what? Listeners. Listeners, okay. The shape of the brand. Let me be quick to say that this is generic. In some brands, it may not apply. apply. So this is a masterclass. It's an academic forum. We will mm -hmm. provide a general um, And then you take what applies to you. What applies to you, exactly. So we can talk about brand taste. Mm -hmm. We can talk about brand sound. Mm -hmm. We can talk about graphics. We can talk about smell. Mm -hmm. We can talk about color. We can actually talk about movement, typography, mm -hmm. and uh, shape among others. Indeed, because of the internet presence today, URLs are being uh, branded. So this... This is not it's not limited to this. We can have more. But at least for the status, let's talk about these 12 brand elements. That is, one can use any of this in his or her brand attempt build. to brand building processes. Exactly. So you're a business owner, you're listening to us. What we're saying is that if you want to take a second look at your brand, any of these things can help you for people to identify you. They are connection points. What is your typography? What font size do you use? We say, as for this font size, it's from this company. What is your taste? What smell do you use? There's a certain um, fried rice brand in this country. Whenever you smell it, you know where it's coming, where it's from. coming from. To the point where when it is not even in your immediate space. And you remember it, you start to smell it. Absolutely. You can use uh, brand shape, URLs, logo. There are lots of things that we can use to identify ourselves. So you can begin to look at some of these things to help to build your brand if you're a business owner. Yeah, so um, again, just for listeners who might not be familiar with some corporate brands. So just examples, mm. just to run through. I'm happy with the Ghanaian brand. So Joy FM mm. is a brand. Masterclass that we are having now is mm. also... Uh, brand on its own. Guel um, is a brand. Joy Business is a brand. And yourself, we have, <laughs> yes, you are equally a brand. And um, person brands today, you know, a lot of people talk about what do you stand for mm. as a person. Mm. Um, because I teach and um, I have students in my department or my university mm. as a whole, I ask some of the students, they, they dress anyhow these days. And you ask them, why are you dressed this way? Some of them, they're just following the crowd. So as a person, what are your values? What do you stand for? I'm happy to say that in UPSA, we have a Monday professional dress. And because we are like a professional, we are a professional university and we expect our students to appear professionally. But you will see a lot of students not following this personal branding tips mm. what do you represent or what do you want to be considered for these are very important when it comes to yeah. personal branding so yao enim banner for is a personal brand uh joy business is a business um brand or corporate brand goel is same masterclass it's a sub brand of joy business 
and Joy FM is also um, a corporate brand. There are other international brands one can talk about. Um, just to run through them, Coca-Cola has been in existence for years. It's a good brand. Okay. Apple, Nike, McDonald's, or people are familiar with KFC, and Google. Mm -hmm. These are all brands. So yes, they are businesses, but they are able to develop and connect with their target audience yes. through certain experiences we have acquired over the time of engagement. So yes, Apple, yes, Nike. Why would someone consider buying an electronic device from Apple rather than competitors? It's because of the experience or connections you have with that, among others. So then, why are we today encouraging businesses or um, individuals or small firms, SMEs, to engage in branding? Um, we are encouraging you to engage in branding because you remember in the beginning we talked about the fact that it helps establish trust yes we also talked about the fact that it works on credibility mm -hmm. it also helps finally with regards to loyalty so i go to the shop to buy a product and um i am thinking through what should i buy what should i buy if the products are branded mm -hmm. i would be guided so i'm looking for a b or CD product because it is what branded and over time if it serves my purpose then I would trust it then it would have some level of credibility and because of continuous purchase of such product then I would become a loyal customer so for businesses we would argue that branding helps to establish an identity and also helps with differentiation. So Joy would be separated from other radio stations in the country. Uh, it builds trust and credibility. I've mentioned that it attracts and retain customers over time. Then it's able to drive business growth as well as expansion. I'm happy to say that, you know, Joy began now. Joy has a lot of uh, sister stations that are within um, the same business so yes you can grow within then brand equity brand equity as well as value um, you know today when you go to the table representing joy business or joy you can charge a particular price against others who might not be able to charge sure. that yeah so it's because joy has been able to develop that brand so yes when it comes to branding businesses and branding firms we argue that if you are able to solidly build a good brand for yourself, yes, you could be 10 cities, but you can charge a 100 cities or a 1,000 cities. And that difference is what we call the brand equity. So yes, uh, there are products we buy, they could be cheaper, but because they are brands, you need to pay more for them. I'm smiling because I have an example. <laughs> uh -huh. Something as simple as Wache, which Absolutely. is, a, I mean, a very uh, common everywhere. Yes, please. There are Wache offerings in this city of Accra. Let me use Accra, which you can get for a fair amount. 30 CDs, 40 CDs. You get a fair amount. It's Absolutely. a lot. You can't even eat it. Yeah. There are Wache joints that give you the same portion in this Accra. Uh, I don't want to mention the suburb. They come from 12 to 1 a.m. <laughs> they sell it. <laughs> 150, 200 cities. Absolutely. For the same portion. Same, same portion. So, again, brand equity. Absolutely. So, <laughs> yes, brand businesses, when you brand yourself, you should be able to benefit from brand equity. Now, let's look at products. Uh, um, I know a lot of people think a business and a... No, they are not the same. A business, as we discussed, is about the corporate entity. Mm -hmm. Why must it be branded? Now, we're looking at a product that is an offering of the business. Must that also be branded yes it should be branded because it creates emotional connections between the user and the product so we encourage that you need to brand your products in order to support in building or establishing emotional connections again uh, i indicated in the beginning i go to a shop to buy uh, a toothpaste okay uh, because toothpaste as branded i would be able to pick one or a particular one out of the lot of toothpaste that are being sold so uh, 
branding facilitates purchase decisions. Then also, um, it provides legal protection. Mm -hmm. It provides legal protection, um, just like we talked about um, data protection, right? Yes, mm -hmm. when you look at um, issues of piracy, issues of counterfeiting and all that, yes, if you're able to brand a product and you go through the processes and you register the name and the rest, if somebody uh, behaves like you are and you can actually sue the person because you've spent a lot of money in building that particular brand. So there's some legal protection for mm -hmm. products that are branded. So because we began with brand identity, yes, everything we are discussing is towards how businesses or their brands can give themselves a unique identity so that they stand out in the crowd. But what is brand identity? So I'll provide some two definitions of uh, brand identity. So brand identity is the outward expression of a brand. Outward expression of a brand. It encompasses the visual, the verbal, and the experiential elements that shape how a brand is perceived by consumers. The second one is it is the collection of tangible and intangible attributes that distinguish one brand from another and communicates its personality, values, and essence to the target audience. So um, this is what brand and bright identity is about. Um, when you have a very good brand identity, it is expected that you should be able to influence your target consumers and you should be able to drive brand recognition. You should also be able to influence the loyalty, that is repeat purchases of your product. And eventually, uh, we expect that in the market, you should stand out. Okay, you should be differentiated in the market. So we would now go straight into what are some strategies that a business can deploy to brand itself, okay? Uh, we set strategies for building a strong brand. So we are looking at the business first of all. Now we are encouraging businesses to first of all define their corporate identity. Yeah. Now corporate identity is so important because um, who are you? What do you stand for? I know in most organizations we talk about mission, visions, uh, over the last five, ten years, we've seen companies now talking about core values. Okay, now it's important you define these things because you are recruiting people from different or diverse backgrounds who might think differently, who might respond or react in situations differently. So when you are clear in defining what the organization is and what it represents. If anybody joins the company, that is why we do go through internal organizational training. Yeah. You train them to understand the company values so that they can behave in the way you want them to Expect be. Expect them to behave. Absolutely. Right. So all of these would help in defining your corporate identity. Right. You establish brand guidelines. You establish brand guidelines. So yes, uh, if you define the corporate identity without providing certain guidelines, it is still going to be a problem. So for example, we I'm seeing Joy FM, I'm seeing Joy Business, I'm seeing Joy on, Online. I'm seeing Joy consistently being in red, mm -hmm. apart from Joy News that you find in um, white. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? Does it mean if I'm also going to use joy somewhere, joy must be in red? Mm -hmm. So there should be clarity, online and offline usage of the brand. M your employees must know and be uh, guided to know the that. Color combination. Color combination. The right way to do it. The right the way, wrong to way to do it. <laughs> All of this is important. So it yeah. goes into establishing brand guidelines. Communicate your brand story. Um, we all come from diverse experiences. Joy did not start as we are here today. It started somewhere in very humble beginnings. A number of people have worked for Joy. And over time, this is where we are. Let's talk about the story. Let's let people understand the consistency in what Joy has done over the years to be where it is today. Yes. Then also, online presence. Um, a number of business are not doing well when it comes to online presence. Online presence is not just having a website. Mm -hmm. 
not having a website. And um, in the last few... It becomes like a notice board. Exactly. <laughs> in the last few years, you find businesses just jumping onto social media platforms. I, I want to sound a word of caution to businesses and their managers. Social media is not for everybody. <laughs> because you need to be deliberate about social media. It requires a lot of work. So if you are not ready, don't go there. I don't want to mention company names, but in the last two, three years, we've had people go onto social media to lament or complain about their experiences about certain service providers in the country and a lot of things had happened. So my point is, even recently, I saw a lot of people tagging for ECG. We mentioned them, uh, mm -hmm. trying to tag ECG online and complain about doom so and all that. So the point is that if you are not ready to be online, please don't get there. Mm. If you want to be online, especially on social media platform, I encourage you to appoint or recruit managers or social media handlers, people who would follow the trend and can quickly respond, respond to the issues when it's okay. So you need to build a strong online presence. Mm -hmm. Now, you don't also need to be on every social media platform. Mm -hmm. um, just like we indicated brand elements, you need to know your target audience. You need to yeah. know your product and what it represents mm -hmm. and so that you will know where to find them. For example, if it's a cosmetic product, you know where those who use it, they are yes. on. Yes, indeed. Uh, absolutely. Then finally, focus on corporate social responsibility. Mm -hmm. Focus on corporate social responsibility. This is very important because um, businesses are expected to also behave like human beings in brand. So we are brand personalities. Mm -hmm. So when you are seen as a brand that is helping society, a number of people may appreciate you by buying from you. Uh, you will attract very good employees because mm -hmm. they want to be associated with the good things you are doing. Yeah. Then now let's quickly go to a product. What should you do to a product? What are the strategies available? Mm -hmm. First of all, I will argue for compelling brand message mm. you should be able to communicate clearly in terms of what you represent to your people you should design a memorable visual identity mm -hmm. you should deliver consistent brand experience then important product quality notwithstanding the name the logo whatever you build in if the people are not happy if they are not satisfied, then you are not they'll doing... they will go and test the they'll promise that you make. Absolutely. So, so I would want to encourage, especially small and medium businesses, to work on their quality. Mm. Um, yes, something new is coming up. Engage communities. Um, these days, we have even online communities where uh, they discuss products without any influence from the product or brand or company mm -hmm. they are this it's just they are talking about uh, i think it's on uh, social media a lot right. they're talking about a particular brand on your blind side so encourage uh, i think in ghana we have we last week we talk about football mm -hmm. we have a lot of people talking about clubs in ghana who are not in ghana and they are not reps <laughs> so but you can <laughs> that, encourage that for me has always been the best example exactly <laughs> yes yeah, so so you can encourage <laughs> or build engaged communities uh, monitor and adapt to market trends very mm -hmm. important and also you need to measure and analyze brand performance over time so um i'm i'm trying to run through because I think it's almost true. I think what we can do is that we can hold the thoughts. Okay. And then get our listeners to also be okay. a part of the conversation. Because usually it's, it's good to also get what's happening outside in the specific yes, experience please. as well and juxtapose the conversation. If you've just tuned in, this is Masterclass here on your Superstation Joy 99.7. We take a quick message from our sponsors. When we come back, we get interactive. Okay. 
your favorite on-air business development program, Joy Business Masterclass, is in session. And you can interact with us on Facebook via the Joy 99.7 FM or Joy Business pages. If you tweet, the handle is at Joy 997 FM or at Joy Business GH. Don't forget to hashtag JB Masterclass. You can also call us on 0302-216541 or send your questions and contributions through to the WhatsApp number 551 111997 and our facilitators will address your concerns. Attention everyone, class is in progress. Welcome back. If you've just tuned in, this is Masterclass. We're interactive right now. Numbers to call 0302-216-541. That's 0302-216-541. You can also send us your message or your comments on 55 If you're driving, please do not text while you drive. We definitely want you to arrive alive. But otherwise, pick up that phone, give us a call, 302 Two one six five four one. What's your experience with branding? Do you own a business? Do you work for someone who owns a business? What has your experience on branding been? Under the conversation on marketing, what do you understand it to mean, and how are you experiencing it in your own specific situation? Numbers to call again: zero three zero two two one six five four one. Just also remind us that today's edition of Masterclass is brought to us by Goyle. Goyle, good energy. Goyle, Yenara. Yeah, yeah. If you have any motor vehicle of any kind, then Goyle has some great news for you. Goyle, PLC, your CIMG Hall of Fame and 2022 Petroleum Company of the Year, has taken the lead again. Goyle has opened ultra-modern liquefied petroleum auto gas service stations across the country. The modern auto gas service is safe, it is clean, and it offers affordable alternative fuel for your vehicle. So look out for the Goyle auto gas station in the following areas. Bema Camp Goyle Service Station, Accra. Beshi Goyle Service Station, Accra. Pedu Junction Goyle Service Station, Cape Coast. Mpinsin Goyle Service Station, Takrade. Kentin Krono Goyle Service Station, Kumasi. Goyle, delivering the safest and affordable gas at your convenience. Goyle, good energy. Goyle, Yenara, Yedia. Phone lines are still open. Numbers to call 0302 You can also send us your comments on 055 one 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 nine nine seven. I've got a comment on social media. This one is from Dada Boat. It says Dada Boat repping from northeast of West Hills Mall. Dada Boat, I'm getting dizzy, dizzy with your direction. Northeast of West Hills Mall. Uh, thank you for reaching out to us. It's good afternoon, yeah. I'm enjoying the class. Please, what is different between what is the difference between brand and goodwill? What does each bring to the organization? Okay, thank you, Dada Boat, for reaching out. Keep listening. We'll get our resource person to answer that question. For the rest of us, you can still send us your comments on 055 or send us, uh, pick up the phone and give us a call on 302 He's asking what the difference is between goodwill and brand. Maybe very quickly. Okay, yes. Yeah. So, um, you know, marketing and accountants, we've been chasing each other for years. Mm. So, marketing, we believe in brands, but the accountants talk about goodwill mm. and they ha found ways of calculating what the goodwill is so largely the two are related okay they are very related goodwill is related to a brand because when we look at the sub constructs i talked about brand equity so we look at the sub contracts and i'll talk about reputation we we'll talk about issues of loyalty and all of this that help us to measure mm. brand equity is the same or similar ones you will talk around when you talk about goodwill. Because goodwill is described as an intangible value of a company. Mm -hmm. Intangible value of a company. Mm -hmm. The same definition can be provided for a brand. So mm -hmm. the two are very related. Mm -hmm. Now, what do they contribute to an organization? Yes, like we indicated for brands, um, if you have a very good brand, you are able to charge more. And when value. you charge more, you get what more revenue. And when you get more revenue, it continues. The relationship continues. You are happy. Uh, yes, you be happy. And I'm happy. And everybody exactly. Is happy. Everybody <laughs> is happy. But then again, when we talk about goodwill, 
Yes, it's talking about increased access to capital mm -hmm. because you can go to the bank and say, I am so, so, and so, I'm known for this, I'm known mm -hmm. for that, and therefore give me a loan at a reduced rate amount. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can have access to capital and there's also enhanced performance. Uh, mm -hmm. In terms of risk mitigation, goodwill mm -hmm. is also uh, a good thing to talk about. So there are concepts. I think so they're that closely related. Very closely related. Right. Okay. Yes, but more often accountants or those in finance, they talk about goodwill. And those of us in marketing, we consider something known as what? Brands. Brands. Yes, I've got a please. caller on the line. Good afternoon. You're welcome to Masterclass. Your name and where you're calling from. Good afternoon. I'm uh, Kofi Che calling from East Ligon. Good afternoon, uh, Kofi. How is East Ligon this afternoon? Oh, East Ligon is very hot. <laughs> very, very, very hot. Talk to us, Kofi. Okay, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a student of UPSA, and then uh, I want him to elaborate more on the uh, social media thing. He said social media isn't for anybody. Everyone. So, well, I, I want to know more about that. Okay, all right. Kofi, please keep listening. And then uh, this evening, when I come to campus, I will look for him through uh, Timothy, who teaches us uh, total quality management. Thank you so much for reaching out, um, Kofi. Thank you. So, I mean, he wants to know... Perhaps you could just elaborate on the statement about yes, social media um, being for everyone. Yes, really yes, says. yes. Thank you so much. Um, we indicated that social media, and in fact, social media is not for every individual. Okay. Then we extend the argument, it's not for every business. Mm. Each of the social media platforms, they are developed for a particular effect. purpose or effect. Yeah. So you find businesses, they are on Instagram, they are on Facebook, they are on TikTok, my admonition is that as a business, you're not supposed to be on all these platforms. First of all, you need to ask yourself, who are your target audience? audience. Where are they? And who am I? <laughs> who am I? You cannot be all things to all to men. To all men. <laughs> so you need to look at these to guide in your online strategy development so that you would be able to tell, okay, uh, if I'm a professional, I'm targeting prof like an academic institution. I expect a lot of people to be on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. so I'm on LinkedIn. And that is even going to be graduate programs, mm -hmm. not undergraduate programs. Mm -hmm. I'm on Facebook. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. But some other platforms I don't want to mention, <laughs> that sometimes the question is, what are you doing there? Mm -hmm. Because Maybe they want to break, it's called breaking new frontiers. No, 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 no. You need to be clear. So earlier I mentioned cosmetics. Right. If it's a cosmetic company and you are on a particular page where mm. people are interested in demonstrating their beauty and other mm. things, fine. But the bank, what do you want there? <laughs> the way to say beauty, I knew where you were going. Good afternoon. <laughs> this is Masterclass. You're welcome. Uh, your name and where you're calling from. Hello? Yes, good afternoon. Uh, you're live on Masterclass. Your name and where you're calling from. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, um, I want to make a comment. Um, if you could just tell us your name and where you're calling from first. Ah, Suleiman. Yes. Suleiman. You know, yes. Good afternoon, Suleiman. Please talk to us. My, my little comment is um, on this brand engine. Um, it manifests in many ways that a lot of people do not know. And I I want to use Jai FM as an example. So, for instance, um, on my radio, the Dial is not doing so well. I think I want to tune into 99.7, and sometimes it ends up going to another station altogether. But there is always something that identifies, um, that clarifies that look, I am either on joy or I'm not on joy. So sometimes when the news presenters are presenting their, their accent, um, the way they even construct, the way they, they they pronounce the words and all that. I know I am on Joy FM. If I'm on the different radio station by chance, I know that even without looking at the frequency, I know that I am not on Joy FM. And the other thing is the the the, the, the jingles that are used. So the jingles are also clear identifiers and it's part of the branding of Joy FM. So they are very clear to that identify um, products. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Suleiman. I've got another caller on the line. Good afternoon. You're welcome to Masterclass. Your name and where you're calling from. Yeah, my name is Daniel. I'm calling from Accra. Right. Daniel, talk to us. Right. So, great, great discussions. Um, I wanted him to touch on the brand, the brand iceberg, right, of late, um, especially when he was talking about personal branding. 
there's an aspect of branding which um, I remember those days in school. We were lectured on the brand iceberg, and I could see a lot of things happening this time around. You have top class personalities, top class presenters, and they're having issues with their personal brands. Now, talking about the brand iceberg, whatever we see may look very good, but under the iceberg, under the water, there's more to what uh, there's more to what meets the eye. <laughs> So how are we going to manage? How are we going to manage that uh, the brand is when it comes to personal branding? I would like him to touch on that. Thank you. All right, Daniel, thank you so much for reaching. I will make a note of that question. How do we manage the brand iceberg? But I've got another caller on the line. Let's take that quickly and then we can answer all the questions together. Good afternoon. You're welcome to Masterclass. Your name and where you're calling from. Good afternoon, y'all. This is your small boy, James Gracie Addison. <laughs> Uncle James, Uncle James is a big man. He's the first national EQ coach for Ghana. Uncle James, you're welcome to Masterclass. Yes, thank you, y'all. Uh, my, my greetings to Doctor. Uh, he, he's really done well. I was really impressed when he touched on the responsibility, the social responsibility right. of companies as a way to create image and branding. Right. It's, it's, it's very, very important. Now, I want him to look at these things, probably if he has not looked at it. Could partnership promote branding or sabotage branding? For instance, if your product is iPhone and you're dealing with uh, uh, maybe the shopping malls in Ghana, the customers at the final point of sale can compromise the brand. And I think it's something that company needs to look at, especially in this part of the world where we want our brand image to be the top notch. Uh, thank you very much. My regard to the whole team. Right. Thank you so much, Uncle James. We're, we're happy you called. So maybe we start from Uncle James and work our way back. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, so indeed, partnerships or collaborations help in Brandon. But you need to be careful the way you go about... Um, partnering with people. So like he rightly said, um, you have a brand and at the point of selling it to your audience, you you partner with someone and he's just doing sales. So in Ghana, we have a lot of companies doing sales and services. Mm -hmm. Now, they actually contribute to the experience that customers have about your company. Mm -hmm. So it is important that you train them. It's important that you're even interested in what they do. Because for the customer, he doesn't see the difference between you and the agent. Mm. So, yes, as we used um, partnership or collaborations or licensing or franchising agreement, we should be mindful about the fact that customers don't see the difference between us. They consider us as one people and we need to be consistent mm. with regards to how we deal with them. So the customer yeah. experience is crucial. I'm sure we can pick this up into a bit more detail next week. Ex exactly. Come. But let's touch briefly on the branding iceberg. With Daniel yeah, Parker. so um, he talked about the fact that I think he was just talking about the various facets of branding we couldn't actually uh, talk about. He was so happy when we talked about uh, personal mm -hmm. branding and then he talked about some of the people I think so he, should we add that as, next as an week, introduction so to next week? Yes, yes, so next please week. Make a note yes, of it yes. So we, we can discuss. I've got a last comment on social media. We take this one and then that's all time oh, okay. will allow us for today. This one is from uh, Vodi Logistics in Niboy Town. Uh, good afternoon, my good friend. How are you doing? Happy New Year to you. It says, Hi, good afternoon, Masterclass. I want your resource person to help us through throw some light on the differences between a brand and a trademark. I know it's a whole lecture, but 20 seconds. Yes, yeah, so. Um, Remember we talked about brand elements. Yes. So basically, a trademark is one of the elements. Uh, when we talk of a trademark, um, it's a legally registered symbol, something that can help with the identity. So yes, uh, businesses can brand their organization through trademarks. trademarks. That's right. what I can say in Brilliant. 20 seconds. Yeah. I know there's a, a, f a bit more we couldn't share today. Maybe yes, please. So we, we, we can do a continuation. The, but what's our take out from today's conversation, in summary, if you will? What should we remember about branding for business owners who are listening to us? Take out for today. Okay, so um, first of all, when you have a product, it can bring you money. But when you have a brand, it can bring you an enhanced revenue. Mm -hmm. So, for example, a product can give you 10 CDs, a brand can give you 100 CDs. So, first of all, we are encouraging businesses to develop brands. It's regrettable that the country, we don't have 
a brand that is more than 100 years, mm. even 50 years. Mm. But we know Coca-Cola has been there for years. Mm. So when you build a brand... How is Kisop in you? I'm just being curious. Kisop is at the exit stage of the product life right. cycle. Um, they try to let nothing next week. We should still continue something around <laughs> yeah, brand. Yeah. Yes, there's a way you can, like Joy FM has Joy Business, Joy Prime. So we yeah. can look at the brand extensions and then the, um, the question that came in. So I want to end by encouraging marketers that it is their responsibility. Mm. It is the marketer's responsibility in organizations to work on brands. So, for example, marketers are responsible for developing a comprehensive brand strategy. Marketers are equally taxed with creating a distinct brand identity. Marketers should be responsible for crafting compelling brand messages. And so, the entire branding job, I know in some big organizations, they have brand managers, okay, but it is brand the champions. brand champions among other. It is the marketer's responsibility to ensure that all of the things we've talked about can be done. I think I came with something small for the nation as Ghana. As a country, we can brand ourselves. We're doing well, but we can do more. Better. And we can do this by promoting our cultural heritage. We can do this by fostering international partnership and collaboration we can do this by investing in education we can also do this by engaging the citizenry and promoting national pride among us when we do this it will enhance or improve on the brand Ghana's agenda and uh, as a muslim let me use your platform to finally appeal to the nation to possibly consider giving us two holidays right it's important <laughs> let me join that conversation because um today is salah tomorrow is going to still be salah okay. thank you so a much a product will bring you value but a brand will bring you even more value. That's Absolutely. Dr. Eben Kalan Abdul Hamid here on Masterclass today. God willing, next week we come your way with yet another exciting edition. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you same time next week.